I did want to talk more about Russell Smith. I actually have that as a note on your outline here. And uh, Russell Smith is obviously very well known as the uh, the lead singer of Amazing Rhythm Aces and things like that. But um, the, the songwriter is, is pretty unheralded, in my opinion, in the music industry. And um, somebody as famous as Russell Smith was with his band and all that. Not too many people know that he was um, kind of a, a, a published songwriter, too, in the 80s. So I, I know you talked a little bit about his mentorship and, and co-writing with you. What things did you learn from Russell um, as, an, as a younger songwriter? I would say Russell was probably the most influential writer, co-writer for sure, of, of my time in Nashville. Loggins taught me melodies, Dave Loggins. Um, but Russell taught me, I went in there one day with a song I thought it was a killer idea about people fooling around in a small town and how they pull down the shades thinking they were getting away with something and you could see their shadows, their silhouettes. So I wanted to write a song called Silhouette Town. I thought it was really cool. And I had an opening line or two and Russell came in and he said, man, people don't like complicated songs. People just want simple songs with melodies they can't forget and something they can attach themselves to. So it's called This Little Town it was actually the name of albums, Russell's last album on CBS, and I had three other cuts in that record. But um, Russell taught me to keep songs simple. He also taught me that it's great lyrics were just conversation put to music. And then Dave Loggins showed me where to find great melodies and how to change my melodies and not just have one set of melodies and stuff like that. And uh, he was very bluesy. And I was one of the whitest guys in Nashville. You know? I mean, these guys <laughs> was, the, was the, you know, the Roy Clark of Nashville. And, and, and these guys were, but were so soulful. But uh, I learned a lot and uh, growing, coming, when, when I played Nashville in the early days, I mean, it was me and Vince Gill and Steve Earle. And we would play the Bluebird to Nobody. And John and Billy Prine would come in and sit in with us. And we'd, lock the front door at one thirty and jam all night long and, and go out the back door, come back in the next day and put a bottle of Jack Daniels in the well instead of paying our bar tab. But um, it was, a, it was a, a really special time back then. And you watched the magic. I mean, there was so much magic going on with Schlitz and Overstreet and uh, Tom Schuyler and Fred Noblock. They were the foursome at the Bluebird. And my foursome was a guy named Scott Miller, and Tony Arada and Jimmy Stewart, the four of us, were called Rodder Fiasco. Oh, man. Jimmy wrote Brotherly Love and Look Heart No Hand. Or, uh, I love Tony Arada. Love Huge fan. Tony came to, I lived in a house with Roger Brown from Menard, Texas. And uh, it was a big house. And I was laying in bed one morning. And I heard Tony singing this song. And I got out of bed. They were having coffee. And Tony was playing a brand new song for Roger. It was the dance. And um, so a few weeks later, Roger and I drove up to Goodlettsville, Texas, because there was a place up there selling exotic boots for 100 bucks. And I had the top off my Jeep, and I assumed that Roger had 100 bucks, and he assumed I had 100 bucks. And neither had a, a checkbook. We didn't have credit cards back then. We didn't have internet back then. We didn't have cell phones back then. And we got there, and I found this pair of elephant boots I really wanted for 100 bucks. And the sales clerk was, was working with some lady on selling boots, trying on boots and stuff. And I, I was hoping maybe I could convince this sales clerk into holding a check for me for a few weeks and letting him know that I'd had some cuts on the radio. When the sales clerk walked up to me and said, are you Bernie Nelson? And I said, yeah. And he said, man, I've heard you at the Bluebird a couple of times. I really love your music. And I said, what's your name? He said, Garth Brooks. So... And Garth was selling cowboy boots and he held the check we got the boots and we invited him out to Douglas Corner to sit in with us and the night he sat in was the first time he heard the dance ever sitting next to me on stage and Tony Crazy. is such a such a humble guy man such a such an everyday person I love Tony to death man reminds me I need to call him he's so busy it's hard to get in touch with him but thank you I'm holding my own and dreaming with my wide, eyes wide open but Tony has a song that I I, next time I see him, I got to ask him to play it. It's the most incredible song. It's called Unopened Letter. And if you know Tony, you understand his brain. Yep. He's so deep. But 
the song is about a letter he got from his dad after he passed and he and his dad had a, a rough relationship and he said he would never open that letter because if it's not opened up he doesn't it can be it can say anything he wants it to say right yeah that's incredible man incredible yeah, I got to call Tony, definitely. Thank you for mentioning his name. Um, 